good morning students and uh, today i'm just going to give you a, an explanation on the poem stopping by the woods on a snowy evening now i just want you to imagine that it is very cold outside just close your eyes and just imagine that there is uh, snow all around you and you are just walking past the woods woods in a, other words mean also a forest because there are lots of trees growing around whose woods these are i think i know his house is in the village though he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow so the poet here robert frost is saying he's asking a question whose woods these are i think i know so he's not confirming that he knows who, who the woods belong to but he's saying whoever the person is his house must be nearby a village and uh, because it's a snowy evening no one is out there and so the poet says that uh, the person in the village who owns the woods cannot see him stopping there to see the woods fill up with snow and uh, he is travelling on a horse so he in the next paragraph we see him uh, asking another question my little horse must think it queer to stop without a farm farm house near between the woods and frozen lake the darkest evening of the year so even as he is uh, raised with questions in his mind he also says that the horse that he is traveling on also must be thinking it very strange queer means strange because uh, there doesn't seem to be any house nearby and also there's a lake you know what is a lake a small stream and because the because of the ice and snow the lake also is frozen the water in the lake and he says it's the darkest evening of the year because uh, there is no sunshine and it's snowing and it's almost dark and he's traveling on a black horse now the third paragraph he says he gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake so who gives the harness bells a shake is the horse so the horse is asking the poet why do we have to stop here the only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake the woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep so here the poet is unsure he knows that no one is traveling in the woods because it's very cold and it's evening time so even there's no uh, time for him to stop by but he has to stop because he cannot continue and the journey will be more difficult so if the poet stops his horse also has to stop so the horse is also asking a question in its mind maybe not directly you know that animals cannot speak but the poet here is talking on behalf of the horse so his horse is wondering why he is stopping maybe there is a mistake why you stop because we have to continue on our journey and in the last paragraph you see there's a repetition of the words and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep so that means the poet is saying he has to travel more in order to reach the town or the place where he has to stop and then only go to rest and he's saying the woods are lovely 
So it's beautiful to travel uh, in this forest or the woods. But it is dark and deep. But I have promises to keep. So he says he has to go back and reach his destination. For he has promises to keep. And he has to travel a long way before he stops for his destination. And miles to go before I sleep. And miles to go before I sleep. Now if you look at these lines you have already learnt in poetry. I have told you that there are words uh, which the ending sound has the same sound. So they are called rhyming words. Now you can open your eyes and look at your poem. And look at the first two uh, four lines. Whose woods these are I think I know. His house is in the village though. So when I said no and though. Both have the same rhyming sound. So you know that these two are rhyming. And he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. So I've already taught you uh, what are rhyming words. Now in a poem also I've taught you how to write the rhyme scheme. In a poem when we write the rhyme scheme we take the first four letters A, B, C, D. They are small letters. So if you look at no and though both are rhyming. Even though the first line we start with A. But since though is rhyming the first line so we say the rhyme scheme is A, A. Then we take the third line. He will not see me stopping here. So the third line can be B because it's not rhyming with line A. To watch his foot, woods fill up with snow. Again no and snow are rhyming. So your rhyme scheme here will be A, A, B, A. Now we go to the second paragraph. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. So which do you think is rhyming queer and near? So again we have A, A. Between the woods and frozen lake. Now is lake rhyming with queer and near? No. So the third line you have to uh, make it as B. The darkest evening of the year. Now again, year, near, queer is rhyming. So again your rhyme scheme is A, A, B, A. So I want you to do the next two paragraphs. Probably it will be the same rhyme scheme. Shake, mistake. A, A. Then sweep, B. Flake. Again, A. So the whole poem, the rhyme scheme is A, A, B, A. So I hope you understood children. And I want you to learn the glossary. The meanings of the words given in the glossary. Or the synonyms rather. And then you have... Read the following lines and answer the following questions. So according to the poem, I want you to read the first one. He will not see me stopping here to watch his words fill up with snow. Who does he refer to here? Yes, he refers to the poet Robert Frost. So similarly, I want you to read the poem once again, understand it well and then write your answers for these questions 1 to 4 in pencil and I will check it up later.